Hi everyone, welcome to another airplane design tutorial. This one is number 5. The last video was about the fuselage mass distribution and the center of gravity. What is still missing is the tail, which I want to discuss here. In order to complete the preliminary fuselage design, we need to add a tail. The function of the tail surfaces is primarily to help keep the airplane pointed in the right direction by giving it stability, damping and control. I had mentioned before that the horizontal tail can be in front of the wing, which would make it a canard design, or it can be behind the wing. Each choice has certain advantages and disadvantages, which I may go into later. For our example airplane, I want to place the horizontal tail behind the wing. The vertical tail must be placed behind the wing. First of all, the horizontal tail must balance the moment that is created by having the CG of the rest of the airplane placed in front of the aerodynamic center. If there was no horizontal tail, this airplane would pitch down and the pilot could do nothing about it. In order to prevent this, the tail must produce a downforce. We arrange our design so that with airflow, the tail produces some lift that is pointed down. So far so good. Unfortunately, on most airplanes, neither the center of gravity nor the aerodynamic center stay in the same place. Obviously, the CG varies with different loadings and even with fuel burn in flight. The AC behaves even worse. It shifts with angle of attack and therefore airspeed. The higher the angle of attack is and the slower the airplane flies, the further forward moves the aerodynamic center. This means that the tail lift also needs to be adjustable. Fortunately, we have anticipated this and added an elevator. The elevator also gives us control over the pitch attitude and flight path. Moving the elevator trailing edge up increases the downlift of the tail, which in turn pitches the nose up. For the design, we need to decide how large to make the horizontal tail and elevator and how far back from the wing it needs to be. The general requirement is to provide sufficient stability, damping and control for all corners of the weight and CG envelope and all phases of flight from takeoff to landing. How this exactly works takes quite a bit of time to explain. Here I just want to give you the basics. The larger the tail is, the higher are stability and damping. The larger the elevator is, the better is control but larger also means heavier and more drag. All three parameters will also improve the further away the tail is from the wing, so we will use a combination of both size and distance to achieve the desired results. The variables are combined into one parameter called tail volume that can be used to compare tails from different airplanes. The tail volume analysis can be used for both horizontal and vertical tail. The tail volume is the tail area times the tail arm times its lift curve slope, CL alpha. The sketch only illustrates the first two, so I have to explain the lift curve slope. Basically, it is a number that quantifies effectiveness of an aerodynamic surface, such as a wing or tail. It is only a function of its aspect ratio. The higher the aspect ratio is, the more lift or force the surface produces for a certain increase in angle of attack. And it does so with less drag for a high aspect ratio surface than for a low aspect ratio surface. As I had said in the video where I explained what the aspect ratio is, selecting it is a compromise between efficiency and structural weight. Because the tail has to produce much less lift than a wing, and it only does so for part of the time, a high aspect ratio is not all that important here. A typical number for a horizontal tail aspect ratio is between 3 and 5. A vertical tail is usually around 1.3 to 2. So to come back to the tail volume, you can have the same tail volume for a small low aspect ratio tail with a long arm as with a larger has high aspect ratio tail with a short arm, as shown in the sketch. If the tail volume is similar to other airplanes of similar size, it is likely to work well. The effectiveness of the tail of these two airplanes with the same tail volume shown here is almost the same, but not quite. For, 
For good pitch damping, it is better to have a long tail arm. If an airplane has poor pitch damping, it will more easily get into pitch oscillations from elevator input or just turbulence, and it will be less comfortable to fly. Getting the tail volume right is the first step into designing a good airplane, but there are other factors that influence stability that can cause problems even with a good-looking tail. Another thing to consider when sizing and placing the tail is the lift the tail is capable of producing. There needs to be sufficient elevator authority to rotate the airplane during takeoff and to flare at forward CG for landing, but there must not be too much up elevator that the airplane get, can get into dangerously high pitch attitudes during stalls. The down elevator deflection must be large enough to pitch down during all maneuvers, including recovery from a stall or spin. Typical elevator deflections are 20 to 25 degrees up and 15 to 20 degrees down. There are a lot of variables to consider when verifying the effectiveness of the tail, and it must be calculated for the corner points of the speed load factor diagrams for all weight and CGs. I talked about the wing incidence and what it should be and why. The horizontal tail is also set at a certain incidence to the waterline. While the wing incidence is set in order for the airplane to fly with a fuselage level in cruise, the tail incidence is set to have the elevator near neutral in cruise. For the typical small airplane, this turns out to be an incidence of about minus 2 degrees nose down from the waterline at the leading edge. The incidence of the tail is adjustable for the purpose of trim on some, on some airplanes, and that is what you should treat it as. If the tail incidence is fixed, but you find that in flight that there is a lot of force on the stick to pull it back, and the CG is in the correct place, meaning it is between the front and the aft limit, then the issue is trim. Adding a spring to relieve the stick force may work, but it still leaves you with an extra aerodynamic trim drag. Adjusting the tail incidence is the correct way to fix it. If you have a pull force on the stick and the elevator is deflected up in cruise flight, then the horizontal tail is not providing enough downforce. In this case, the incidence needs to be reduced, that is, the tail leading edge needs to be lowered. The horizontal tail plan form, just like the wings plan form, can be rectangular or tapered. A tapered plan form is a little more efficient aerodynamically, but some, some designers prefer a rectangular shape for simpler manufacturing. The plan form has less influence on performance than the aspect ratio. Making the ladder a little larger has more benefits than trying to come up with the ideal plan form shape. I want to conclude this video here and continue in the next one with a vertical tail.